my name is uh, Tim, and I am from uh, Vancouver, Canada. I am uh, 31 years old, and I graduated with my uh, Bachelor's of Social Work degree from uh, Thompson Rivers University, which is in Kamloops, a small town just three hours north of Vancouver there. That's a little bit about me. And uh, uh, Same as Tim, I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, 31 years old, and um, I graduated with a Bachelor of Social Work program, too. So, yeah. yeah, so that's where we met there. Um, so, like I said, I want to, um, uh, yeah, so I want everyone to see if they can uh, just open up the floor so people can ask questions. Uh, we'll give them just a brief uh, background uh, about how we got teaching in uh, South Korea here. But for most of the time, I do have some questions that people uh, ask, but if you can sometimes unmute yourself and ask questions personally, it'll give us a better direction as to what you guys are looking for. But I guarantee a lot of you guys have a lot of questions about South Korea. You should. Um, just to get started, uh, it was an awesome process. And so, um, what should we do? Should we start with the process? Do you want to see Hey, BJ and everybody else, if you could mute yourselves if you're not talking so that we can hear, that would be great. you can choose two ways to um, teach here. So one is going the private school or Hagwon route, and another is doing the public school route. So we chose to do the public school through the GOE program. We've been here coming uh, or 11 months 11 now. Months. So oh, we actually shoot. go home in one month. Um, so when we came here, we chose a recruiter to help us. We actually had multiple recruiters because um, we weren't sure if we wanted to do public school or private school. Um, but we ended up choosing private school and doing um, it through Korean Horizons. Um, so we had a really great recruiter there who helped us with all the visa um, paperwork and the process and different things that we needed. Um, and we definitely recommend him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his name is Alistair. Yeah, and like she said, is the public school route. Um, and we came here as a couple, so I'm not sure if you guys are going solo or as a couple. Uh, both are feasible. Um, a couple things to mention before when you do apply. I know some people will probably have some choices, maybe three top choices, like an application of where you'd like to go. Um, it's very standard, no matter how you are nice to them or try to be like, hey, you know, I'm very eager. Can you please tell me where you're going? They're not telling you where you're going. Uh, they ain't. And I think I'm, you know, pretty friendly and I can try to say, hey, can we get to this place? They're not telling you uh, uh, where you're going. So they won't uh, really tell you until maybe, how long was that? Uh, like, give me a few days or a week. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome. But I know with Epic program, people have uh, not known where they're going until they actually have landed in Korea. Yes, yeah, find out so very last minute. Yes. Um, so, can everyone still hear me even though someone's audio is on? I just want to make sure. Yeah, just wondering. Oh, hello, there's some people. Is that uh, Carrie Carlson Smith? Hello? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, good. At least people can hear us. Okay, I'm going to keep going because I thought maybe there's people's audio on that they can't hear us, but it's good they can hear us. Um, yeah, so going back to that, you will not know where you're going in Korea until days prior. I think we pulled his leg and we got it maybe five days prior or so. Um, and then we searched up this place. Um, and so I don't think it needs to worry. If you're coming there with an open mind and you actually really, truly want to teach in Korea, um, we found out that um, 
it's not bad at all where you go. So personally, because we are going to one of the most rural, or this is a word for ruralist area. Uh, most, most rural yeah, area. Rural, one of the most rural areas, yeah. Yeah, um, so, yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. I was really um, worried coming here, so. Yeah. Once you actually hear, you realize that Korea is not like rural Canada, where we're from, yeah. where, where we live. And yeah, it's a lot better than what we were expecting. A yeah. lot more things to do and offer. And it's close to one of the main cities, the biggest cities in Korea. So it's not bad at all. Yeah, it's about a 40 minute, or sorry, 50 minute bus ride from Daegu, which is one of the biggest cities there. And when they gave us our location and they said, uh, Gochang, that's where we live. But in if you read it in English, it says Geo Chang. So if you try to go and come off the airport and come on a taxi and say Geo Chang, you ain't going anywhere. So uh, <laughs> we learned that lesson is Kachung. And um, we searched it. I couldn't find anything on Google. And like she said, she was kind of worried of where am I going and what is this place? And this is maybe not the choice. Where we had no idea where it is. And I'm like, all right, well. I guess we're going to go to yeah. and, and oh, yeah. oh, sorry as a couple so if any of you are yes. coming over as a couple unless you're married you can't actually live together so that was another one of my fears was that we would be placed in different cities or we're placed in the same city but an hour apart so I didn't have any idea where we were going to be but um again GOE came through with us or came through for us and then we are only like five minutes apart from five minute family, walk so. And it's brilliant. You get two houses for free. Woo! All right. Good. You know? So sometimes, you know, when we're <laughs> loving each other, I can say, adios. Uh, let me go home and watch my Netflix and peace out. So um, it actually it worked out really well. And I think a lot of times you can put things um, on the – yeah, I guess I don't read that. So one sec. Uh, uh, yeah, I will get to some questions. Uh, I th on the thing, you can say you're with your partner and uh, you're not married, but you want to live close. And I think a lot of the time they just don't want to say, OK, for sure, we'll guarantee it. But they will try real hard. So if you're a couple, don't be afraid to apply and say where we're going. Um, Korea itself is not that big. It is a beautiful place. There's so many different areas everywhere you go to. But I mean, um, to get from Seoul to almost like Busan, you can get there on a KTX, but two and a half hours, right? Yeah, 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 yeah two, two and a half hours. And I'm from Canada, and I can go from Vancouver to Kamloops in three hours and not even scratch the surface of Canada. So, I mean, um, that's what I realized here. So, no matter where you live in a rural place or a, a big city on the weekend, you can go to anywhere you want in Korea. And that is why I love it. Um, traveling here is easy. The bus is on time. When it says it's going to be here, it is there on the dot and it's going to leave. And when it says it's going to get to this place, it gets here on the dot and there's no if and. So the transportation here, I think that's one of the question, is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so this uh, is housing free, housing free then? Yes, housing is free. Um, you pay for your water and your electricity bill. Um, would, Sometimes a building maintenance fee, so I pay one, but Tim doesn't yeah, pay one, so that mm -hmm. can be dependent. Yeah, so it's a 500000 deposit. Um, it will come out of your first paycheck. Yes, it yeah. comes out of your first mm -hmm. paycheck. However, they give you startup allowance, so it really doesn't matter, and you get it at the, at the uh, get it back at the end. Um, what? How does housing look like? Um, should we just quickly show? No, your, your room is a little messy. No, sorry, my room is messy. <laughs> uh, we're leaving soon, so I started packing yesterday. But yeah. it's like a studio apartment. So um, someone asked, is it for a single person? So uh, if you come over here and you're not married, you aren't placed with roommates. You are put in your own apartment, studio apartment. So I have a kitchen, bathroom, a uh, washer, uh, a double bed. A lot of people get put with a single bed. Um, so again, that's dependent. They'll supply you with a TV and a desk and a chair to do any sort of work. So there are things that um, that they'll guarantee that they'll put in your apartment for you. Good. Um, but we have we have friends who have big, big houses, big nice places ones. with actual bedrooms and an office and a little balcony. So I mean, you never know what you might get coming here. Yeah, and we, that's where we go and party at their houses because they're big, so that's good. Um, I'm going to go up here. Uh, how long have we been teaching in Korea? Uh, 11 months. Yeah, 11 months uh, coming up pretty soon here. Um, 
Yeah. Housing look like a single person good. Which cities are good to teach in the areas less polluted? I heard of Seoul or terrible pollution. Yeah, you know, it, it's give or take. And you'll, you'll hear from all the, the in Korean news that pollution comes from China. It's one of those things you hear all the time. Also, pollution from the dust in China. Um, it's give or take. Um, the, the pollution, yeah, sometimes you can see it. There's an application where you can follow. Um, Ashley knows it. What's the application called? Air Visual. Air Visual. They show you all the air pollution around the world. So even where you're at, Air Visual it's called. And you can see uh, how the pollution is. So if you want to download that, um, no, I do not work for them. Uh, <laughs> air Pollution, she usually tells me and says, hey, look at the air pollution. And I'm like, oh, I can see this guy. I'm good to go. Um, so the, with things like that, you might not know. Some people wear masks. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people wear masks. Yeah, a lot of people wear masks just because it's almost like a fashion thing as well. I'm, I kind of like it now. It's like kind of weird. It's like, all right, man, it's pretty cool. But um, if you are healthy and if you're whatever, you don't have to wear a mask. I never wore a mask yet here. I don't need to. Um, so it's all good. So you don't need to worry about that. But some people will wear masks, especially if they are sick or if they have weaker bodies, then they wear, wear a mask. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the most part, like Southern um, – Southern Korea is a less, not a lot less polluted, but definitely if you're based in Seoul, you're going to get majority of the pollution. Or if you're um, in the bigger cities, um, you might get that. Or I'd, I'd say even Northern Korea, yeah. maybe because it's closer to China. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, where we are, we definitely get pollution, um, but not as bad as what I was expecting coming here. I thought it would be worse. Mm -hmm. So. Cost of living compared to your potential first year salary. I think I know what you mean by that. Cost of living here. Oh, I know this, this is my forte. Okay, cost of living. Um, I'll try to go real fast. Um, it doesn't cost too much to live. So um, 2200 So for me right now in Canadian, I can save. I've been trying to pay off my debt. So I save $2,000 Canadian a month, and I send that home. So I live here with probably close to five to 600 a month. And that's just me like trying to really pay off my debt. So 600 a month. That's being very frugal to be able to do that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's being very frugal, just joining like a lot of sports stuff and not trying to spend too much money. So and being based in a rural city really helps. Yeah. Cause not you not spend so much money because you don't have all the opportunities to do that. Exactly. So, you know, so if it comes there, so I save about maybe five, 600 American uh, a month to do some spending there. And then around 1500 American is what I send home uh, each month. That's me being frugal. If you want to just live normally, say you want to have some drinks here and there and you want to hang out, I can still send home 1200 American. If I'm a partier, maybe like Pete, Pete's going to be going all here, having some soju, having some Korean barbecue, going to the clubs, going to Seoul every weekend, doing your little thing, dancing. Then you can still send home probably $1,000 American each month. It's a great way to save money. Um, and still, it, you, you're going to send home probably more than wherever you go in this world, I believe. Uh, even if you try to black out every single day, you are still going to save money. If you don't, I want to see if I can party with you then <laughs> because it'll be a great time. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What else, Sarah? Ash? Let's the next uh, so vegan or vegetarian options um, in a smaller city like where we are. We're fortunate. We have one vegetarian restaurant, um, but I don't know if that's usually typical. Um, grocery shopping can be hard and eating out for sure can be hard as a vegetarian. You're, most of the restaurants, Korea loves meat, loves, loves, loves meat. So meat on everything or fish uh, products in different things. So um, I think it would be really hard definitely to be a vegan, um, but maybe vegetarian wouldn't be so difficult, but you might be limited to lots of pasta restaurants, pizza restaurants, that kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of produce at the store it's no problem but the, the can be expensive. It, it can be expensive depending what season it is it's crazy for the fruits and stuff of like that like the pineapples or whatever and sometimes yeah, quite... grapes would be like ten dollars for four of them it's like <laughs> it doesn't add up so um that can be expensive but if you do enjoy meat and they take care of the meat, I think, because it's very sacred to them. So I think they do a good job cooking it. Your school lunches, you come and you uh, get school lunches every Monday to Friday. And our school has a lot of organic options. Well, it is 
everything's organic. So pretty good in that way. But not vegetarian. Based, not vegetarian no. based. And you do pay for people <clears throat> lunch. That's another thing to mention. Okay. We think we were going to pay, maybe. Yeah. Um, but what I did is I bought a crock pot about six months ago. So um, I've made and I ordered different things on um, there's two main oh, yeah. uh, websites, three actually. Mm -hmm. One is iHerb. So if you guys are in America, I think it's an American company. Um, so that has lots and lots of options for healthy food. And then there's G Market and Coupon. And yeah. so those are Korean um, online shopping websites. So you mm -hmm. can order all kinds of foreign food items. So I've made vegetarian chilies, um, vegetarian soup. So having a crock pot could really help you if you're coming over here as a vegetarian or a vegan. Yeah. yeah. And something about that too, you can like order the food, dry foods, like any sort of dry Can foods, food. canned food, dry food. Wet any, food even. What? Wet food. Wet food or as like well. Food or whatever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wet food. Whatever she says there. Um, you can think, and the best thing about it, um, looks like I'm a promotion for uh, Korea. I love this stuff I say is just literally, I get really excited. She's like, geez, relax. But um, the mail system here is amazing. I order something on coupon or, or G market or all these food and is at my doorstep either the next day, depending if it's in Korea or it's like this. And on a Sunday and a Saturday, they yes. still deliver. The so delivery here is the amazing. Deli yeah. And it's at your doorstep. And it's so safe. No one takes anything. No one steals here. And often free, free delivery. Free delivery. Yeah, like really, really cheap. Yeah. Order something on the website and coupon and stuff that's based here in Korea. So in Korea, is, like I said, three hours get to one place or another. So sometimes it's just there that next day. And it's like, whoa, that's too quick. I want to make a meal next week. So it's not like Canada or maybe America. You order something on Amazon, which is next door to you, and it still takes a month to get there. No, no, no. They are efficient. Mm -hmm. um, really? Okay, go let's ahead. keep going. Um, uh, rural areas generally accessible by train. Um, not train. Um, some rural areas might be along a train line, maybe, um, but for the most part, you're looking at using the buses here. But they're pretty frequent, um, cheap, so it's not too much of an issue getting from um, place to place, especially if you're going from a rural city to a known bigger city, then you won't have any issues. Um, and Lyft or Uber? No, not that I've seen. Taxi. Tons of taxis cheap. and cheap, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. A taxi ride generally when we go to Daegu is about to go maybe maybe ten minute ten minute ride maybe three four dollars no like the starts yeah ten minutes oh later. starts yeah but maybe by the end of it is like seven dollars not even six yeah five I think so but it all depends yeah and yeah so it's very cheap compared to back home and you can use these taxis and. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And they have taxi app, taxi applications, so if you don't speak the language, you can literally use this taxi um, taxi application, and it's just like Uber. It'll show you when to come there, pick you up, you mm. give them this de destination, and you go. So you don't even need to speak much Korean. Yeah, it's called Kakao Taxi. Yeah. So when you get here, there's tons of Kakao Talk, Kakao Taxi, Kakao Maps. Um, so those are all good things to to yeah. get. Yeah, Philip Thompson, I know you're tardy. It's all good, my friend. People like that. Um, you didn't really miss too, too much. We're just talking some basic things. And later on, I think this will be on the webpage, so you can go back and see it. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, pets. Yeah, pets. Uh, I know in Epic and I think GOE, yeah, I think the public schools, at least, I'm not sure about private schools, but you cannot bring a pet um, to Korea or have it in a, an apartment that is um, paid for, paid for yeah. by the government, uh, public school program. Yeah. So, uh, which kind of sucks because I would love to get a little kitty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. There's tons of stray cats. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. So you'll see them all over and you want to take them home, but you're not allowed. So. Yeah. You may not be able to bring your pets, but there's a lot of people that do have pets here. <laughs> mm. yeah, no one really knows. So whatever. He's make friends. Yeah, you can easily make friends while learning the culture, both in expats and teaching communities with native communities. Yes, uh, uh, it all depends how open you are. I've made a ton of friends here. So as she, we have in your cities, you will have an expat, and they're usually on Facebook as a group. You meet people, and then they become your lifelong friends. I got a lot of friends here that we just met, and I got a lot of Korean friends. Yesterday, I went to the. Uh, 
to the doctors. I went to just go get my ears clean and everything. Just want to get a whole body clean. And I, I asked my Korean friend, hey, do you know any places here? And all of a sudden, he recommended. And all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, he called me back and said, hey, Tim, I uh, made your appointment. It's 2 o'clock at this thing, blah, blah, blah. And I already told you she was coming, that you were coming. I said, man, this is great. So I walked in there and they're like, oh, hello, you're this uh, person's friend. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's get started. And I was like, man, you're not getting that back home. You know, uh, the people here are great. They want to help you so much. And medication and doctors and healthcare, it is cheap. Yesterday I got a massage. I went to get my knee checked. I had an injury for MCL two years ago. I didn't want to do that in Canada because it takes a while. They x-rayed it yesterday. They started the, the, the uh, therapy for it. Uh, they gave me some just antibiotics and medication and um, uh, free massage and everything. And it cost me $27. Twenty-seven dollars get an X-ray. Sorry, I'm gonna go. It was. It's awesome. So yeah. Highly so recommended. with the healthcare thing, um, when you come here, I think as a foreigner you have to contribute to the healthcare mm -hmm. program. So you pay fifty percent, and they and the government or the public schools or your hagwon, I think, or private school pays also the other fifty percent. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's the same amount. You contribute equally, and then everything is really, really cheap. Yeah, so things as braces and going to, to get uh, teeth clean and teeth check. If you want to do it, if you trust here, get a place here, get a good recommendation, it's cheap here. So a lot of people come here to get the Invisaligns and braces here. Or okay. we have a friend who got her eyes done. Her eyes it's a lot done. Cheaper, yes. Um, here to get laser eye surgery. Um, With how compared the school system is in South Korea, has it put a lot of stress on you in the teaching aspect? You want to touch briefly? Or I can. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the competitiveness of the South Korea has to do mostly with the students, not really you as a foreign teacher. Um, the students, uh, you know, a lot of their um, life depends on how well they do in school in certain years. And it's almost until they, when, they start, it's when they're young where it really matters. When they start getting to high school, they already know their future and stuff, and they start being kind of like, all right, I already know where I'm going, and it's almost like coasting through. So I teach high school, and I teach in – Two high schools and one middle school. So it's very common to, if you're in a rural area, to have three uh, schools, but they're all just like one day here, one day here, one day here. And uh, honestly, I got a pretty good gig with my high school. Um, I'm able to get to know them and teach them. And it's not really any stress on me. And just if you're a cool person and you're just open and you're understanding that these are not the same as back home students in America uh, um, or Canada, you're really, and you're open to learn some of the things, you're gonna have a great time. Because when I came here, people's like, oh, you're in high school, or you're going to this, this specific school, oh, it's really tough, they don't care, the students are bad, blah, blah, blah. So I got kind of nervous, and I don't get nervous. I went in there thinking it's gonna be, oh, I can't believe it. I'm in high school, no one does high school, and they put me in here, man. I don't know why, and honestly, no, I've made, my, the, the, the friendship I made with my co-teachers and the relationships I made with the students, these things don't go away. And it's different because these students for you, they're not your friends, but they're just people that you're meeting and they really enjoy learning off you and you're able to stay in touch with them rather than back home. You're not really friends with their students, but here you see them on the street and oh, mm. every time they think it's like the first time they've seen you. Oh, hey, teacher Tim, teacher Tim. And they're, they're their parents and they're so excited to see you. Oh man, what's up, what's up? And they try to connect with you that way. And you're just like, man, they're excited to see me. Mm -hmm. I'm somebody here and it's like, that is so cool. And you thought you did maybe a boring lesson, but to them like, Woo! Last time lesson, Tim. That was good. Sexy Friday, Sexy Friday. I don't know where they learn Sexy Friday from, but they come and say these funny things to you, and it just res it resonates with you. And you can also share those things with them. So uh, it does not put any stress on me, for sure. Um, who helps you get everything sorted out? So uh, <coughs> if you're doing um, public school, you're going to have a main co-teacher. And so they picked us up from um, the city that we were staying in before we got taken to our uh, city that we're gonna live in. So they pick us, pick you up. Um, they'll take you to get your uh, alien registration card um, application done at the immigration office. 
Uh, they'll take you to get your bank done, your phone. They do pretty much everything for you. Um, so you'll hear lots about co-teachers when you're looking up anything about Korea. So it can be uh, an interesting relationship, but yeah. both Tim and I have had really great co-teachers who have helped us a ton since yeah. we've been here. Like, honestly, they, some people refer to them as like the mom, your mom and dad while you're in Korea. It's <laughs> like, if you have any questions about anything, you can text them, call them. Um, well, they'll text you and call you, you yeah, on the weekends, on you, yeah. <laughs> ask you to play ping pong and sports. So, yeah. yeah. Right, Ash? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they're the go-to that'll help you with everything. So, it's really, yeah. Hmm. It's good having them. Great having them. And, like I said, they speak English. So, um, they help you with anything. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, like I was sick in... Um, January, so my co-teacher wrote out all my symptoms in Korean. So when I went to the hospital, you know, translates for the doctor, even though he spoke actually pretty good English, mm -hmm. but she was able to. So st little stuff like that where you're just like, oh, no, I need help doing this. And then yeah. there's always that someone who can be like, okay. And they're, yeah, they're very empathetic. If you go just, <clears throat> oh, hey, go, <laughs> go take rest. You're sick. It's like, no, nah, just pass them up. No. Yeah, because that's one thing you hear coming here is that oh, Koreans no. never take a day off work. Mm -hmm, if no. you are sick, um, Koreans still expect you that you're going to work. Um, with the public school, you'll get 11 days sick leave. And from our experience, so I had the flu. It was like, you cannot come to school. You need to stay home. You need to go to the hospital. So they were really supportive. So I know a lot of private schools, people talk about how you can't have any time off. Um, but in our experience, we've yeah. been pretty lucky. I haven't had to use any. A lot of times, even if it is a school day, a lot of, most of the times, like, like I, or all the time, I'd rather go to school than stay home. It's like, sometimes it's like fun to see the, the students again and play some games and whatever. So I haven't used any yet. Um, which is very good. Back home, I'd use a couple here and there. <laughs> what? <laughs> healthcare is cheap. Yes, uh, it is. Healthcare is cheap compared to the states, definitely. How does it work with spending money to the sending money to the U.S.? Is it a fee? Um, yeah, there's this bank that you have, and I think it's called Expat in Korea. There's a lot of Facebook groups. If you're not on Facebook groups in Korea, search them up because there are some different banks that are connected from the U.S and Korea, I heard, and you can open them up and you can send free all the time. Um, on our o mobile app, which our co-teacher helped set up, once they help you set up your mobile uh, banking, after that, it's a wrap. Everything is done on my phone. And usually to save fees, we're together, I send money to her and you send money home and then also one or two days, bam, it's in your bank account. Yeah, so week. because we're with the same bank, Tim sends money to me, there's no fee, mm -hmm. um, then I send money to Canada. And there are fees there, so I think maybe total fees we pay is about, it depends how much you send, but about 50. Canadian? 50 Canadian, 60 Canadian. About so 30, actually, 30 US, 31 US. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a bad Canadian dollar, but yeah, <laughs> around there. But yeah, it's really easy definitely get um, set up with mobile banking. So I know some foreign teachers still have to go use an ATM or, you know, they don't have it set up where they can <clears throat> just use their phone. Um, but that's being super convenient that we don't need to go into the bank ever. And the banking hours in Korea kind of suck. So they're open from, I think, nine till four, which is yeah. the time when you're in school. So you'd either have to leave work early. Um, so best to get when you go to get everything set up, make sure you get the mobile banking app. And yeah. it's all in English. The one for NH Bank, that's what we use, and we like it, uh -huh. and it's all in English. Yeah. yeah. Isila or Isila, I'm not sure, sorry, uh, Isila, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, she's asking questions left, right, and center, so that's uh -huh. pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's just sick. Uh, here's the banking, here's the vegetarian. So if you look on the chat, there's our, our third partner in crime there, she's asking some questions, so we'll try to motor along here. Typical work week as far as work days, hours per week. So what is the typical work week as far as hours, days, and hours per week that you'll teach? Do you get a certain days off to explore Korea or vacation? Ash? Um, so typical work week for public school. So private schools are different. They have different hours, sometimes different days. So you might be working on a weekend. Um, where public school is pretty standard in that you're working Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30 or 9 to 5 sometimes I've heard, but mainly 8.30 to 4.30. And then depending um, 
I guess it's no longer depending. Um, just recently, Korea uh, changed their uh, law, their labor law for um, vacation. So all public schools throughout Korea now get 26 vacation days. Um, so you definitely will get an opportunity to explore the country or go to other countries. Um, some schools have it where you need to take a certain amount of days in the summer and then a certain amount of days in the winter. Um, Tim and I were lucky, so we took a little bit in the summer, and so right now we've actually, we're going to have, all he's had week. all of February off pretty much, and I've had, or I will have about two weeks off um, coming up here, so yeah, but it really depends on your school, but you'll definitely get 26 vacation days. Yeah, uh, depending on the school, as well as uh, depending on your co-teacher, and I'm in high school, so they end earlier, so honestly, there's some things such as being quiet and yeah. stuff like that yeah. that you don't have to do so you don't really get it guaranteed but i mean if uh, they give you some time off just that's how them. It, just, it works out for me mm -hmm. okay let's see oh this is a good question ash hopefully we can get through all these questions uh, as a woman do you feel safe ash go ahead we talk about this a lot of the time um where is it right here as a woman do you feel safe oh um yes yeah i do um I, yeah, I always say this. To me, living in Canada, it's one of the safest countries. It's always the thought in my head, but still when you go out, you're always kind of thinking or you're on guard. But here in Korea, um, it's not to say that you don't have to still be careful, but I have never felt afraid. And I'll leave his house, you know, midnight and ride my bike home. And I just don't, I don't even think about it. People are so friendly and they're so nice and you just don't really even, you don't see anything or you leave your, like Tim said earlier, your stuff's outside your house that you get ordered. You're not worried about it getting stolen. We both have bikes that we ride. Nothing gets stolen. Like people here, um, I'm not sure what it is. Now I'm but, interested in you. Yeah, you go down just, a dark alley with two guys smoking and stuff like that. You're like, oh, here we go. And all of a sudden, and they look away. So yeah. they're uninterested. They don't care. Yeah, I, but I mean, you know, maybe places like Seoul, Busan, you might have uh, a few more people that might be uh, different. Oh, Willow, do you, sorry, <laughs> do you speak Korean? If not, how difficult it is to get around with the little language? Hangul, Olo, Jo. You know, I can read that, Willow, and I could not read Hangul at all before I came. I didn't even know a bit of the language. She had to tell me to say, Annyeonghaseyo, which means hello. I, the, the, the alphabet is really easy to learn and i can read it and the thing about uh, korea 10 percent of korean or a little bit more of, of hangul pardon me is english so if i go and read this sign and i'm doing my broken korean and reading it once i read it it's all in english like if i'm going to a place i want to go get some like mechanical or paper like office depot i'll go and i read it's like office depot and it's like office depot it's in english <laughs> Or go to the Mart something, Hanado Mart, Mart. Oh, that's English. So a lot of it, if you actually know the language, is in English. So please, if you're going to Korea, spend two weeks just learning the alphabet. Korea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, do not feel frustrated because it's going to hit when you do it. And when they're speaking, you're like, this is the easy. There's no hidden sounds. What you read is that sound. Like English, there's no hidden pronunciation so if you say the sounds is exactly what it is and 10 percent of things are in english and if someone told me that before i came here it'd be easier learn your numbers um the il e sound you know uh samsa all the way to 10 okay because after that you'll know the thousands and i can count up to however however because it's the same format and once you do that you'll know the pricings and stuff and when people ask you for money you'll know it so take it from someone that didn't know there's going to come to korea 15 months ago, did not know any of the language or whatever, and I can sing some songs in Korean, I can write some, and I can read some, and I actually have not took any classes yet. I will, because I love the language. Mm -hmm. So we guys teach in GOE. Uh, we talked about it before, Philip. Uh, it'll be recorded. Uh, so Mr. Tardiness, there was one of the questions. <laughs> uh, for the fall start August, the app cycle started this month. Should I wait a little to build my resume slash application or start working with recruiters? You can start working with recruiters ASAP, Thomas. Um, Especially if you're doing public school. Yeah. And you're wanting to do Epic. Um, Sorry. For the fall start. Um, okay. 
applications are being taken now, so it's best to get your application in as soon as possible and start organizing all your documents. So definitely. <coughs> yeah, good. The, the sooner you get your application in, the quicker you get your interview. And then your choices, your choices to go to your preferred city yeah. on your application form. You can put what city you prefer. Um, <coughs> so yeah, you want to get it in as soon as possible. Emmy, Emmy boys, does anyone 40 plus get hired to teach English in South Korea? Yes. There are some teachers that are 40 plus and they're cool. And some come as couples and some people have stayed here for 10 plus years. We met a couple of Canadians that work in a university and he's like, I'm not going home. And this is my home. He's married to the Korean woman and he just goes home in the summer times or winter times. Wi-Fi question. Is a pop, is a pocket Wi-Fi a thing in South Korea? If so, is it cheaper? No, I don't really see many people with pocket Wi-Fi's. I just see people with battery packs all the time because they love to be on their phones and they play mobile games. So if you are a gamer, this is the place to be. Girls, guys, boys, everyone's playing mobile games and having fun and they do it together. Um, Apartment Wi-Fi though, we actually um, don't pay for it. We, we, can't, we arrived here and um, I don't know who pays for our Wi-Fi, but we just have it in our apartment so that you don't need to worry about and we both got um phone plans mm -hmm. so a year we as soon as we got here we got phone a year plans, yeah. a year long contract um a year long contract and um what am i trying to say good deal you know oh yeah good, sorry good deal and uh i have 11 gigabytes of data to, i have 16 gigs got 16 i pay uh, fifty dollars Canadian, and, and then, I guess. Yeah, about fifty dollars Canadian, and I you. Pay like fifty-five US. Oh yeah, US. US, yeah. Yeah, like so maybe like US. forty, forty-five US for me. Maybe? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, and at sixteen uh -huh. gig, you can get cheap gigs and just pay twenty if you really wanted to. I know someone had like one gig and got around paying ten dollars US because yeah. they got a good deal. So yeah. So you just make sure you come over here with an unlocked um, cell phone. Cell phone, and then <clears> you can just put a SIM card in here. And yeah, some people think that they need to buy a Korean phone once they come here. Is that easier? I've heard Korean phones can be much more expensive than buying them in the U.S. or Canada. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I have met some couples um, that are one teaches and one does not. Um, seen some people. There's a lot of people here play like some professional baseball. I remember one of the guy he's here and his wife just does not, they sit at home with their kids or they teach online as well. So I have seen that, um, I'm not sure how often, but there are people you can do that stuff, definitely. Um, let's see, Peter, if we have time, I'll try to walk us through the first few days. Uh, if not, Pete, like I said, you can message me and I'll let you know. Um, but the first three times, in first couple of days in Korea, it felt like a whole new country and it felt really big and like what's going on. But right now it's like, ah, uh, it's almost like we're professional. We can get around and motor all the different places and we know where we're going. But hopefully at the end, if there's time, we'll try to get back to that. Yes, okay, Lizzie, this is being recorded. Okay, do you have local Korean insurance? Yes, uh, Philip, you're tardy again, man. We went through that. So yeah. we'll look back and we'll talk about insurance there. Oh, that's funny, Philip, you're a funny man. What are some recruiters or companies you recommend? Um, yeah, we talked about uh, Korean Horizon, and they uh, deal with Epic and the GOE, and uh, Alistair for the, is he for both? Yeah, he's for all. For all, yes. Yeah, yeah. so all, yeah, all in public schools. In public schools. Alistair, he's the man. He'll take care of you. So, Corvia, I've heard things Corvia. about, too, so those are both yeah. good ones, I think. Yeah. Um, the laser guy surgery is not covered in the league. It's not covered. Right? The eye surgery? No, sorry, no. not covered, but just a lot cheaper in Korea mm -hmm. than um, other countries. Yeah, so Roderick, we answered your phone question there. Yeah, it's awesome. It's fast internet. You can get Wi-Fi anywhere you go to, and a lot of times it connects automatically. Uh, high school students, no adult classes. Yeah, I don't teach any adult classes, uh, just the high school students. And I teach, uh, I don't know if we mentioned this earlier, but I teach oh, at yeah. three schools, all middle school <clears throat> students, so... Um, Good. Were you, you, you are given, um, I guess a curriculum, you're given a textbook. So generally the foreign teachers will be given textbooks and then um, you'll teach certain parts of those textbooks. So um, most foreign teachers that I know 
teach uh, like a listen and speak, so listening, speaking English, and then the Korean co-teacher covers the reading, writing, grammar part of English. Um, so yeah, I create um, most of my own lessons, but um, what's really saved me, because I have three schools and I've got nine textbooks, so I have to make lots and lots of lessons, um, but in Korea they have a website called CoreShare and another website called Weigook. Um, so Weigook, you have to pay $20 for a yearly membership and CoreShare is free, but you can go on there, look up the textbook that you have, and a, there's a lot of material. Some yeah. textbooks are beginning to be new, so I just got some new textbooks that are not on either of those websites. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the textbooks have similar expressions, so that was one thing when I know, um, Peter, you asked this question, when we first got here, the first month was really stressful. After I was given the nine textbooks, I felt so overwhelmed. But once you start doing it and reading, okay, this lesson is similar to that lesson. Um, I can take this lesson to that school. You start to kind of get a handle on things and feel a little bit more organized. And those websites helped me a lot. So Good. I definitely recommend looking. Well, that's passionate. <laughs> it was hard. Yeah, no, it was good. And keep it nice and short for me. I didn't have any curriculum or anything. I got freelance of my class, which is maybe really rare for the high school. So every day I just got to literally uh, just get them talking. So I was like a, supposed to be like a lower level high school, but the students were great. And I just got to choose what kind of lessons. A lot of my things were games. There's a lot of like PowerPoints. You can get family feud and different things like that online. So yeah. Uh, how we go apply for a job? Um, I think we did cover that one. Mm -hmm. um, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and Netflix, all of them do work, yes. So, yes, we can do that. Uh, Amazon is a little bit... Yeah, they can yeah. see it. Some, it's, it's just like yeah. anything. Sometimes it ships there, sometimes it doesn't, but Amazon yeah. Prime does work, yes. Does it feel safe to ride a bicycle? Dedicated bike lanes. Yes, it's very safe to ride a bicycle, but you know, you're in a rural town. Sometimes there's no rules on the road. So, like I said, at first you're like, oh, my God, there's no rules. And all of a sudden you realize it's just organized chaos, and it's beautiful, beautiful. You can ride the other side, and it's just, if you're a good bike rider, cool. Bigger cities, yes, there's bike lanes and different park stuff. Like that. Uh, can you recommend a person, department, resource, or contact? Yes. Or elsewhere? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Banks, yes, South Korea banks can connect with American banks. Um, I'm sure so there's a lot of questions here. There's still 48 that we haven't read, so we're trying to go. Yes, do you have a new phone? Let's see, are you going to teach in a different country now? Um, good question. Um, so right now, we are, our goal was to pay off our debt, and um, you know, I'll give you a brief little thing. I think I had about maybe 25 or so um, thousand coming in here. And actually, with the bonus at the end of the contract, I'll probably gain 10 plus. So I actually probably had almost a $30,000 swing being here. But that's with me, you know, just um, grinding and uh, being able to focus and just pay off the money there. Uh, we are um, leaving South Korea April 2nd, but just because uh, we got some weddings to go to at home and some family, just like gatherings that. Uh, we kind of just wanted to go, but in August, we're applying to come back here. So don't put your applications in yet because we want to get our first pick. So just hold up on that. I'm joking. So we're coming back. I don't want to leave here. We don't want to leave here at all. But we got a lot we're, of... Yeah. For, yeah, we're ready for a bigger city. So yeah. the rural, like Tim said, we've been paying off you. student loans. Um, and going rural, you get more money, yes. um, more opportunity to save. So this last year has been great that way. But yeah. um, we both think it would be cool to go to a bigger city. So we're hoping mm -hmm. maybe Daegu, Daejeon, one of those places. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, rural, yeah, rural cities. I love this place. I love this place. <laughs> <laughs> I leave tomorrow for South Korea, so they're making much. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Honestly, Amy Carrier, I'm jealous of you. That feeling, like I said, there's going to be culture shock for anybody. Like, I can get placed anywhere, and I'm usually comfortable. There's going to be some culture shock. Please just give it two to three months, and your whole life will change. Because if it was the same feeling I had in, for the two or three months, it had been maybe difficult. But later on, when you know no one's trying to screw you, you're, you're okay, and everything just comes normalized. Yeah, you know, because sometimes I didn't believe in culture shock. Oh, this is going to be culture shock. And, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. I got here. I said, 
I don't know the language. What are they saying? Oh my God, nothing. Maybe I'm, I got over my head. I can't believe this. Oh, it's two months. This, this is going to be like this for the whole 12 months. I can't believe it. And all of a sudden, boom, right when you just relax and there's maybe two or three, there's a lot of different holidays here. Okay. Like you said, we, mm -hmm. now the holidays, you get 26 days now. It just changed. So you get 26 days holidays. Plus there's usually 15 or so, I think average of 15 national holidays. Mm -hmm. So that's 41 days off. Yeah, so lots. Okay. Before it was 18. Now it's common. Everyone gets 26. And then right when you get a couple breaks and you're like, there's another break, there's another five day break. Wow. There's all these celebrations. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden something just comes over you and you're like, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So this is where they talk about culture shock just being two, three months maybe, or a month, who cares, or whatever. Now I'm loving this place. Oh, hello. I know how to say, oh, yes. You're, you're just speaking the language. And it's cool. Uh, if you want to get braces, how much does it cost? Um, um, I think our friend paid maybe. Four million, right? Yeah. So 4,000 uh, USD. Mm -hmm. Average class sizes can vary. I have one class with eight people, and then the most I have is 21. Uh, I have a class with, with two two students, and then my biggest class is like 31 students, so it really can vary. Yeah, the beds here, yeah, they could be quite hard. Yes. I know they, they <laughs> ask there, is the beds quite hard? Yeah, it can be quite hard. Um, it all depends. Yeah. What this? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I'm just going back and see if I miss anything. Good, you said apply for jobs. Um, Okay, let's see. Are you going to teach in different country from learning Korean? There's also, yeah, there's talk to me, and transportation, braces, good. Tattoos. Um, yeah. A lot of people come over here with tattoos. So when you're filling out the application form, if you say that you have tattoos, then um, you actually need to submit pictures of them. So you need to be ready to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not to say that you won't get <clears throat> hired, but they just want to make sure that they're in places that you can them. But I've even heard some teachers have tattoos and they don't cover them. So it's really dependent on your school, I think. But definitely when you're interviewing, I would say, okay, you're going to cover them and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to tell you another thing. Things like tattoos, piercings, different hair changes, all this stuff. You read, oh, my God, they don't like this. Man, I go to my school and sometimes I'll have a beard and some people are, like some of the career men, you know, they have to shave a lot because in their culture, it is maybe dirty to have hair there. But if you have it, they are like, oh, look at that. Oh, it looks good, Tim. Very handsome. And they're very, you'll get that a lot. All your students and all your teachers or whatever, they'll say, oh, very handsome. And you can be rolling out of bed with sweatpants and you're just like this. And you just went out drinking the next day and all of a sudden, oh, Tim. Strong, very handsome. Like, man, thank you. Like, thank you. You know, it just makes your day. And it's like, I didn't really, I didn't do anything different, but appreciate. It. Then all of a sudden, you get really excited. So I can have funky hair. You can have. I have my friend. He's hilarious. He wears his LeBron James jersey with no undershirt like this. He has, uh, he has dreads, and he has a long beard. Just totally opposite of what they say on his stuff. And they love him. He's the most popular guy uh, here around with all the kids, stuff like that. He's just different. He just just chose to do it himself. And you know what? It's They love it. So what, I'd say, though, GOE is known to be a lot more relaxed than um, mm -hmm. EPIC. EPIC's a little bit more strict. I just want to answer the question. Okay. Um, oh, Thomas? Um, so... Our visa is for teaching at our main school, but our main school can decide if they send us to other public schools in our area. So often with rural, they don't hire one teacher for each school. So they'll just send you mm -hmm. to two or three schools, which you get paid extra for. So it is all a part of your, your visa. Yeah. Um, and you get extra money, like we said, for going to these different mm -hmm. schools. Uh, over yeah, here, no. one real quick, how many times is karaoke? A lot of times. I love everyone. It's karaoke on every corner of the street, and that's where your kids are every day. Karaoke. Not about. Go ahead. Um, and then, Abby, if you like to have a top sheet and a flat sheet, I'd say bring it. I mean, you can order on G Market or Coupang, um, but I think it's pretty expensive to get uh, like proper sheets that we're used to back home. Um, so I'd say bring it because 
yeah, it's a bit different here when you go shopping. That was one of my things when I first mm -hmm. got here, um, trying to find proper bedding. I, it was hard in a rural city. That's not to say in a, if you're <coughs> a place in a big city, they've got like big um, box stores. Mm -hmm. So you could go there and probably find things a little bit easier. Good. Uh, teaching with type one diabetes, I haven't really heard anything about it, but like I said, they're very big on health here. So it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, bring as much medication. If you are on medication or whatever and you type it down into your application, when you come, get as much uh, prescriptions as you need when you come here. You can bring all that for the, the whole year if you wanted to, if you get a doctor's note. Um, is there any TEFL teachers with children? Yep, there probably are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are. And they can put them into, there's international schools here, so if they want to go there, there's international schools usually, you know, in every city or major bigger cities. Um, and they, your kids can go there and you can learn from international school. Um, uh, image. image here. Um, no, I mean, I, I often wear jeans. I always wear like, for the most part, like a nice shirt, but I do wear jeans a lot. Um, I know one thing I brought a lot of shoes because even though I had read that you didn't wear shoes inside, I didn't quite really understand it but now you know you always I always have my little sandals are called they're called slippers here and you change into them as soon as you get into school and they look like black and white adidas <laughs> sandals and so you don't need to worry about shoes here which is really <laughs> yeah, nice yeah. um and all the kids yeah are wearing the same shoes and same teachers black too. Clothes, yeah yeah but <clears throat> definitely korean people have amazing fashion so they are always dressed nicely um so if you want to with the slides on yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With, this, with this summer, yeah. <laughs> i love it because i'm a socks and sandals guys and here i fit right in the, oh everyone's wearing it wearing a nice dress and socks and uh, sandals so but yeah. but yeah definitely korean women are all about their looks i would say um mm -hmm. so yeah if you're worried about that you might want to bring some nicer clothes, but I'm pretty casual, so yeah, yeah, I'm, I don't worry too much about it. You wear American clothes, and they're like, "Oh my God, fashion!" It's like, man, I just put a hoodie on. <laughs> um, straighteners, yeah, there's <clears throat> energy converter. I think you get some from your uh, recruiter right away, but if you want, um, they're very cheap here, so don't worry about your energy converter for your hair straightener. You can buy that here uh, from any store if you're comfortable doing that. Uh, is it affordable to travel to any Southeast Asian countries from Korea? is we can track travel realistic or impossible. So David, I'm not sure if you're like me, I can go somewhere. If there's a three or four day holiday, I would go someplace. However, those are other busy times of people are traveling. So sometimes uh, it might be busy at those airports or something. But if you are just a person that look at last minute deals and there's a three or four days and it's, if you wanna go and you see on those deals and you have time off, go. Otherwise, you know, her, she ain't going because if it's busy and if uh, there's gonna be not worth it, it's more like that but if you're okay with just traveling and spending some time yes but yeah a lot of people here my friend's just going to thailand i think today and he's coming back on like friday it's just because he has some time off so yes if you're here to travel so next year we're going to come back because this year we saved we're planning on doing some traveling next year and actually enjoying so much more even though i've enjoyed i've enjoyed and visit so many other cities here on a tight budget so yeah um some less head items hey, oh. I'm just going to talk about the hair loss. So to be honest, I have heard um, or read actually online mostly uh, about hair loss. I have not experienced any hair loss. I did not buy any special. Some people buy like a special uh, shower head to convert the water to make it um, maybe softer. But I haven't, I haven't experienced any hair loss. My hair is great here. I don't really. It is. Well, <laughs> like I feel like it's soft. I don't, I don't notice anything, but. Definitely, I've heard some foreign teachers say they're experiencing hair loss, but I yeah. can't really speak to it myself. If so. you look at my face or before, I usually keep my hair short. It's probably the longest I've ever had. So I say that it's actually, you know, not too bad here. So it's pretty good. Oh, uh, have you heard? Okay, good. Extracurricular activities. Um, I'm all about that. I come here and since the teachers really enjoy, especially the GOE, because it is a rule, so it's not many foreigners like us. So people that love sports, I play soccer every Saturday morning and Sunday morning uh, with Korean people. And just my friend and I, we do that. And then any single day you want to be athletic, like go to the ping pong place, it's the swimming pool, this bowling alley. Uh, I got a pool table and ping pong place in my school. So I played all my students. Um, there's a lot in a GOE, the 
mountains are big, just like BC. The only difference is they're lush and green, especially in like the summertime. You can go hiking and it'll be 11 p.m. and be warm outside and you're going, oh, I'll go hike by myself. And you just see a ton of older Korean people walking and jogging at 11 p.m. This place, they're all about being fit. And that's how the people live longer. They're just really healthy that way. So definitely so many extracurricular activities. There's uh, indoor golf, screen golf, baseball. There's everything. Um, there a lot of groups that go for cooking classes that you can go to the YMCA, which is some free for foreigners, learn how to cook uh, Korean dishes, learn how to do water paintings. There's so many things if you look online that uh, different cities offer and you can sign up and go there and use it for free. Um, there are some language exchanges that you can go and learn from people that want to learn English and that you want to learn Korean. So you learn there's so many different things. And I was talking to Ashley, there's so many festivals and just things that you would do and you're not getting them back home. Mm -hmm. um, Brandy, um, concern about power outages? <coughs> I don't think, I don't even think that we've had one that I've experienced here. Um, no, there's not a dryer. So Tim really misses this. Um, so you do use like a metal hanging rack, which, yeah, we both miss having a dryer. Rack. Yeah, dryer. That's um, yeah, one thing I miss. But it's okay. It's fine. Um, <laughs> and then products that do not contain skin whitening or bleach components. So <coughs> I, I haven't really bought anything that's had that, but I did bring over a couple deodorants because I did hear the same thing that when you're wearing deodorant, it'll bleach your skin. So maybe bringing that over yeah. might be helpful, but I think you, you can, can order it online. Without. You yeah. can order online. I brought actually deodorants. I heard about that and I still have some left from 11 months ago. I brought like four or five of them and I just use them. But now I'm like, I can just order online or no, this one's okay here. So don't worry about that stuff. Um, <clears throat> You know what, the office job, have you met anyone who transitioned from teaching to an office job? Um, yeah, I've seen people uh, teach and all of a sudden find another job. And honestly, <clears throat> for me teaching, I would love to teach, but there's so many things I'm like, man, if I was you know, maybe in my early 20s or at school and I would stay here for a while, I'm like, man, teach, knowing the English, if I learned the language, a Korean language, I can do so much more here. It's crazy. And you can definitely find different jobs. Um, the, the, are there gyms or treadmills to run on? Um, yes, there are gyms. That's one thing I do not like in this city. There's like a monopoly. The gyms, they're expensive. It's like 240 for like three months, 240 US for three months. Where back home, I was getting nice facilities. I was getting for free or just really cheap. So the gyms here, there's a gym everywhere. The gyms come with a sauna and like hot and cold pools. So it's very cool and you can even sleep in them. But uh, definitely very tough to pay that much. Oh, I got this one question. This is an important question from Roderick. Uh, my friend, he had his locks done back in South Africa, but here he gets his uh, retwist and braids in, like she said, Itaewon, <clears throat> this place in Daegu, uh, which has, uh, it's called um, uh, Camp Walker's a Fordham Street. But yeah, you can get fades here. You can do all this stuff as many um, if you're looking for a, uh, a barber, some Korean barbers can do it, but there's a lot of, um, what? Nothing. Oh, a lot of uh, barbers as well that um, you can get from here, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're gonna wrap it up. Um, thank you guys for all your questions. Oh, yeah, um, We do have, um, already there's, what is it, our Instagram takeovers. Yeah. So there you can find our, um, what are our ID takes? Yeah. So if you do have anything that you want to ask us, you can message us on there, um, and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Okay, here are our separate handles. Okay, so if you do it, yeah, awesome. You know, I love doing this. They're kicking us off. I don't want to leave. You can tell. Um, she keeps nudging me to leave. Man, yeah, it's awesome. I cannot say anything more positive about our experience here in South Korea. I can't wait to come back. I don't want to leave it. Yeah. But today, you know what I'm thinking? I'm going to get my teeth clean for very cheap. Go and just do a lot of errands today. So everyone take care. Uh, hope you. you enjoy South Korea. Uh, I've loved it. It's a second home to me. Uh, it's going to be hard at first, like I said, but stick with it and have a positive attitude and welcome their culture. And you're going to be just fine. So if we do come back, maybe we can all link up. 
Uh, we're pretty cool people. So yeah, at Divine T Dollars and at Ashley Marie Little. Take care and enjoy. I talk a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.